Alright guys, welcome or welcome back to our video. So we were working on a series where we build a CRUD application on Node.js and MySQL. So this is a third series or the third part where we are going to read data from a database and update it. So this is going to be the update part of the CRUD. And in our previous two videos, we have inserted and read the data from our database. So let's get straight into the part where we write the code for our update. So let's start with creating a get route where we get the data from our database. So the update part is a combination of reading and writing as well. So let me brief you about it. So we have to read the data from our database to know the existing values and then paste it into our form and then write if any changes is required and again send it back to our database. So it's a read and write both. So we will be using app.get as well as app.post. So first we have to read the data. So we do app.get and then we give it a route. So we will call it update and then we will pass a function and this will have two parameters that is request and response. And so we have to write our query to see if connection is established. So we do con.connect, this is the connection medium. And in our con.connect, we write a function. And in the function, we check if there is any error. So we write error. And if at all there is any error, we have to display it. So we do if error, we console log the error console.log the error. All right, so if at all there is any error, we can console log it. And now we have to create our SQL query. So we do var SQL, where we are going to write a query is equal to select star from test, which is our table name. And we are going to select a specific ID. So we have to update one ID at a time, one data at a time. So we will query it by ID, which is a unique parameter. So where ID is equal to custom. And let me close this query over here as well as the variable over here. Yes. So after that, we have to get the ID. So we do where ID, where ID is equal to request dot query dot id id all right this might sound a little different request dot query and it's different from request dot body so to brief you about it in request dot body we get the data from the html body and we get it back to our back end and we process the data over here and we send it to our front end or to our database but in request dot query we get the data from the query in the url so I'll show you more about this later as we go and run our code. It will be really visible over there. So we do request.query.id where we get the ID from the query. And now we have to set up a connection. So we do con.query. We're going to pass our query over here. So the first thing that we are going to pass is our SQL query. So SQL. And then we have to pass the parameter for question mark, which is our ID. So we pass it in square brackets. So it's ID. And after ID, we have to pass a function. The function has two parameters that is result and error. And all right. So if at all there is any error, so we do if error, we console log the error. Console dot log the error. And if it is successful, you have to render a page. So we do res dot render. And in this, we will render a page called update.ejs. We have to create a page. So let me do it over here. Let me go to our views in our views folder. Since we have all the EJS file in our views, we will create an EJS file called update dot ejs. All right. Let me go back to my app.js. 
we have created a file called update.hs we will render the same and we will have to pass some data from a backend to this page so we will do it by adding a comma and in a flower brackets we will have test which is our database name and we will pass the results that we have queried all right so we have passed the result over here and we have rendered the data so this is our rendering route so this by this route we will get the data from a back end to our front update page where we can view the data before we update it so let me go to update and okay let us copy the entire code from display so it's almost going to be the same let me paste it over here let me change the name to update and we need a container we need the form so we'll use it over here we don't need the table so if you hold shift and the first form where you want to select and till the part where you want to to end the selection if you hold shift and click it will select the entire region so let me delete it and over here yes so this is the form where we were entering the data so we have to make some changes to it so over here let me add a value so what we are doing is we are going to display the value over here so that once the value is seen we can just edit it or we can reference it so in the value we are going to use ejs to display the existing data from the database so we do lesser than percentage equals to test which is our table name and we have to request the zeroth value since we are putting it in end loop we are requesting the zeroth value we put it zero dot dot username with user name and then again we will close it yes let me copy this and paste it over here the same for our email and this is email One additional step that we'll be needing here is the ID because you have to display on what ID do we have to edit it. So let me add another input field over here. We will do input and the type is text. All right. Place holder. We don't need a place holder. All right. So we need a name attribute and the name will be called ID. And it needs a value. The value is greater than percentage equals to test of zero dot ID. Let me close it. All right, let me save this. And we have to give it disabled so that we don't have any entry or changes that happen to the ID. The ID has to be unique and it has to be maintained the same way. So let me save this file. Let's fire up a node mode. Before that, let me start XAMPP. So let me start SQL, that is our database, and Apache, that is our engine. So let's fire node mode. So we have node mode app.js. Once we have our server running, let me go to a browser and hit localhost 3000. So here we can see that our data is displaying. So let me create an entry where we do an entry for let's say tim at tim at mail.com let me submit this so we can see that the seventh entry is tim at mail.com so now we have to link this with our update page so let me go to display and in our display here we will create a route where we go with email and we will give a table heading and over here we will give update over here we will create a link to update so i've just pasted it you can see so we have a route that update which we have defined in our app.js and over here we are generating an id which we have to send in a query so this is the query part you will get a better idea when you'll see the url so from a test database once you are running the for loop for the exact id for the iteration we print the id over here so let me save this go to my browser and refresh it so here you can see that the update is ready so let me try to update sim 
Okay, so here we have an error where we can read the value of zero. So the exact error is an app.js. All right, so the error here is first we are passing results and then the error, but the format is first to pass the error and then the result. You can save this and refresh this page. All right, so here we can see that we have the ID that is a fifth entry, the name as well as the Gmail. All right, so we have almost done over here. Let me show this. If I try to enter or change the data and we submit it, we will have an error because we are not able to post the data. So here in our update.ejs, we can see that we are sending the form over an action called update data. So let me copy this. So here we have to create a post route where we send the data from our front end to our back end from the form. So we do app.post open. And over here, we will define the route. So it's the one that is copied. So it's update data. We pass in a function. The function has two parameters that is request as well as response. So over here, we have to get the variables from our front end. So we do var name is equal to request dot body dot name. So we'll do the same for the email. So email is equal to request dot body dot email. We even have to get the ID to uniquely identify it. So we do var ID is equal to request dot body dot ID. And we have to console log if there is any error. So let me just check if all the ID and the error is getting up perfectly. So let me console console dot log and let me pass name followed by email followed by the ID. We are doing this step just for confirmation purpose. Once we are done and the program runs successfully, we will just comment this line out. So let me establish a connection. So we will do var SQL. So over here we will write a SQL. Since we are updating, so the query changes. So it's update test, which is our table name. And we have to set the username. Sorry, username capital N as defined in our database. So let me confirm it over here. So let's open our database. We can hit PHP my admin. And over here, we have to go to test crud, which is our table. And this is a table over here. So you have username n as capital. Let me go to this route. User name is equal to question mark. We're going to pass this later. Followed by email, which is again capital E equal to question mark. And we have to pass a where clause so that it knows which table or which entry to edit. So where ID is equal to question mark. Close this, close this. Oh yeah. So let's establish a query. So con dot query. And in our query, first we will pass the SQL statement followed by the parameter. So it's username, which is name, followed by email, followed by the ID. Over here, we will have a function. The function will have two parameters that is error as well as result. So if we have any error, we have to throw the error. So if you do if error, sorry, yeah. Console dot log the error. If there is no error, we can print a statement called console log. And this is for our reference. And we'll have to redirect this. So we will do response dot redirect. And we will redirect to our home route where we have all the table data represented. So 
that's all let me save this so let's go check our purchase let me close this file now display refresh this so now let's edit the entry for gym update so let's make this jimmy and submit all right so the data hasn't changed let me see what's the error all right so we cannot get the id it's defined as null so there is some problem over here all right so the error is over here since we have set it to disabled we cannot fetch the data let me set it to read only so that we can just read the data but not edit it so let me save this refresh open our display refresh it close the second tab refresh it and let's again edit the entry for gym so this time again we will make it jimmy and let me submit it so all right we can see over here that the data is changed from gym to jimmy so let me try the same for tim and make it timmy so it's tim and we will make it timmy or let's make it a big name so like it's let's make it timothy t-i-m-o-t-h-y to make it big so submit all right, we can see that term is changed to Timothy, and that's how we replace or update the data in our database. So we can even check it over here. If I refresh this page, these are the previous entries. So it's Jim and Tim over here. And once we replace it or refresh it, it's Jimmy and Timothy, which is the updated values. So that's all for this video, and that's how we update data in our database. Stay tuned for our next video where we show you how to delete data and also stay tuned down the line. Where I give you tips on Node.js as well as a lot of projects to be done. So that's all for this video. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.